has written a poem, Gandhi and Poetry, wherein Gandhi ji shoots question after question, question after question to his visitor, Poetry, regarding the origin and purpose of poetry. Poetry answers, I am born in a forest on the tongue of a hunter and brought up in the hut of a fisher, fisherwoman. The references are to Ramayana of Valmiki and Mahabharata of Vyasa, summing up the view that even the greatest of the epics are products of the ancient tribal law. According to Sahaya Singh Chopra, Tribe means a group of people living in a particular place from time immemorial. Tribes' identities are differently named at different places according to their geographical positioning, their social stratification in the society, and so in which makes them distinctive from others. It is said that India has the second largest concentration of tribal population after that of the African continent. The central, the south and the northeast parts of India are inhabited by a large number of tribal communities with their primitive traits and distinctive culture. It is rightly said that the development of literature and of different art forms in tribal communities predated the emergence of literature, predated the emergence of literature and arts in the so-called mainstream society. Until recent times, the creative literary output of the tribal communities was largely ignored. The reasons are many. The very existence of the tribal people is threatened and they have to struggle hard against the systematic exploitation and increasing discrimination. Their literature is mainly oral and their mainstay is in the unsophisticated folk languages of the tribal world. The ignorance of hundreds of indigenous languages of the various tribal communities stood in the way of our understanding the yearnings of their soul. But for the socio-political movements, the life and death problems of these ancient communities would not have seen the light of the day. According to a survey, the throwing open of India to the exploiters of the world by globalization and economic liberalization, the wanton loot of water, forests and land, the prime resources of the tribals, has already taken a toll of the lives of tribal communities. The rapid industrialization and the greed for the exploitation of natural resources like forest products, minerals and water has led to deforestation and virtual plunder of tribal wealth. The eco-friendly, peaceful and harmonious lifestyle of the tribal people has been paralyzed beyond redemption in the name of economic prosperity of the country. Big dams are being built in the hills and forests, destroying the ecosystem forever denying the children of nature the very survival. Tehri Dam in Himalayas and the Narmada Dam in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh have brought to the fore the plights of Adivasis and hill tribes. Sundarlal Bhagapura and Medha Patkar, though failed in their attempts to save the tribal communities, stir the consciousness of mankind in this respect. The efforts of Mahasveda Devi and Shivaram Karan will ever be remembered by the tribals with whom they were not only sympathetic but shared their problems living with them in the hills and forests. Arundhati Rai's voice 
though harsh, was echoing the truth when she said, with them are to a nation's development what nuclear bombs are to its military arsenals. They are both weapons of mass destruction, she said. It is an irony that when the constitution guarantees the people the freedom to live in their own traditional ways, Guardians of the constitutions are busy evacuating the tribal communities from their traditional dwellings. They warned from the distant past. The hills and the forests were warned by the tribal community from the distant past when the mainstream life was not yet bigger. The first attempt to classify and record the manners and customs of the castes and tribes of South India was made by the Ethnographic Survey of India constituted by the Government of India in 1901. Edgar Thurston, with the help of L.K. Ananda Krishnaya, N. Subramani Ayer and K. Rangachari, investigated the characteristics of 300 castes and tribes of South India and brought, our, brought out his monumental work, Castes and Tribes of South India, in 1909. Since then, some committed scholars have tried to unravel the mysteries and miseries of the tribal communities. But the culture which traditions enshrined in tribal literature is yet to be heard or read by general public. Social activities and prominent personalities have come forward to introduce us to tribal literature. It is a welcome feature to note the journal's life Yudharat Am Atmi Delhi, Aravali Utkos Udaipur, Jarkandi Basha Sahitya Ranchi, Adivasi Sattva Chattisgarh have devoted themselves to the tribal literature discourse. The first novel, Kochetati in Malayalam, Sinnaka Kochetati. The first novel, Kochetati in Malayalam by Adivasi Narayan is a notable contribution to tribal literature. It is said that Narayan, who belongs to the Malayalaya tribal community in Kerala, was irked by fanciful and romantic representations of the tribal life and decided to write an authentic novel depicting how these children of nature were mistreated by the ruling class, the bureaucracy, and religious zealots. Narayan says most of the incidents in the book are based on real incidents that I remember and what I garnered from my elders' experiences, especially what my great grandfather recounted of his life. Mahasveda Devi, a devoted social worker and writer, has said, Kochetati, one of the First tribal novel, novels is a remarkable work and should be translated into other Indian languages. The work has been translated into English by Catherine Tangama and I hope Sahitya Academy will take up the translation work in other Indian languages. Sahitya Academy, the national conscience of India, has already developed a project of Indian literature in tribal languages and oral traditions to introduce the literature to the reading public of India. And this venture is a major step in presenting the unheard voices of India to the people of India. The Irulas As far as the tribal literature of the tribes of Tamil Nadu are concerned, the Kotas, Sodas, Irulas, Kurumbas, Patagas and Paliyans, special mention must be made of the novel Cholagar Totti of Bala Murugan. He has come here. Bala Murugan, published in 2004. The novel, first of its kind in Tamil, speaks about the trials and tribulations of a community known as Solagar living near Dalawadi, up above the town of Satyamangala. The blood, sweat and tears of the Solagar community flows like a muddy river throughout this story. 
they are caught between the devil, the sandalwood we are upon, and the deep sea, the ruthless police, the land grabbers and money lenders, not to speak of the unmindful governments. Like many other tribal communities, Solagas are also worshippers of nature. Even when they dig for tubers, they used to take what is required for their food and leave a chunk to grow a guy. When they gather honey, they take care to leave a piece of honeycomb intact for the honeybee's food. Live and let live is the policy of tribal communities. There are many poignant scenes in the novel. An aged grandfather of the community is walking through the forest with his little granddaughter. On the way, they see a skeleton mass of an elephant. The child asks the grandfather, Tata, why do they kill the elephant? The old man says, Dear, they kill the elephant to take away the ivory tusks. The child prompts further, Tata, what will they do with the elephant tusk? With a sad voice, the grandfather replies, Darling, with the tusk, they will make elephant toys. What a paradox that singes our heart. Solagar Thoti needs to be translated in other Indian languages and I do hope Sahit Academy will take interest in this novel. Two years earlier to this novel, tribal literature in Tamil got a film from Indran's translation of some tribal poem from all over India. The title of the work was People Born Before God. The poems throb with the anxieties, fears, struggles, joys and a sense of pride. In one of the poems, an Adivasi poet from Jharkhand declares, When did Shiva was born? Can you tell me? When did Jesus was born? Can you tell me? We were here even before gods were born. We were here even before gods were born. Gods were born only a long time after we were born. They were born from amongst the human beings. We were born before gods were born. <laughs>